This is William Tincup and Ryan Leary, and you are listening to the Use Case Podcast. Today we have Sean on from Canny. We're going to be learning all about Canny, all about Sean. Would you do us a favor, Sean, and introduce <laughs> yourself and Canny? Thanks, Ryan. I, absolutely. I love the way you say that. <laughs> Well, and it's the hand motions as well. It's like, yeah, if you're watching, he's like, uh. I got to, I got to look at the camera. I got to look at really, I, I, I can only do one thing at a time. We all know this. You're all good. Um, first of all, thank you for having me on the sure. show. You guys, I'm yeah. a, a, a huge fan. I've been working with William for a while and uh, nice to, to, to get to work with you, Ryan. Um, and so I love that you guys give uh, an audience or an opportunity for founders like myself to come and talk about the things that are exciting to us, like, I don't know, HR tech, right? Who, who says that? So, so first and foremost, um, <laughs> we won't hold like, that against you. You just Good dropped intro. your cool points. Like <laughs> yeah, but, uh, I, he, he said this was a judgment free zone, but maybe it's only off the air yeah. conversation. So I don't know if that that's great or not. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> so look, my name is Sean. I I have been a serial entrepreneur. I've been involved in multiple startups, multiple exits, um, and have really just enjoy building and solving problems. My latest, uh, or my, my previous adventure, um, I was part of an organization called Thread or Thread Research. You can see it at threadresearch.com. We built a tool that automates remote clinical trials. So in the life sciences space, healthcare, heavily regulated, dealing with personal data. Learned everything that has to there can be that there is to learn about dealing with um, uh, data and and um, and the regulations around that in the healthcare and life sciences space. Uh, I loved that that job. We we built this application. We ended up selling it to private equity. Um, I stuck around for a few years as their chief operating officer and ended up uh, retiring and leaving to you know go and find what I want to do next in life. Um, I learned a ton about how to bring a product to market. I learned a ton about uh, working with customers, um, how valuable and important their input is into the actual iteration development process. Um, and I, I love being part of the technology and the, the, the SaaS world. So then the last few years I've spent uh, doing a few passion projects. Number one is I teach a, a class at Lehigh University. So Lehigh is on the East Coast. It's right outside of Philadelphia. Oh. It's cool. Yeah. Are you uh, physically in Lehigh? No, I'm a, I'm in Southern California. So oh, well, I'm then that's California. not exciting for me. <laughs> I'm actually I from Allentown, though. We grew up in- oh, okay. So I'm in, I'm in Hatfield. See, that's exciting for me. So I'm right below Quakertown. Okay. So if I said these two words to you, do they resonate with you? You ready? Mm-hmm. Go birds. Hell yeah, it does. Kind of uh, kind of like Dallas sucks. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. Wait, what are we talking about again? No, hey, you know what? On our on, on one of our last episodes, it was yeah. all Houston. It was Houston Astros, oh, Texas yeah. Rangers. So this is good. No, yeah. no, it's good. Well, it's fair. Yeah. Be, it always balances out. <laughs> so I grew, I grew up in the Lehigh Valley. So diehard Got birds, it. fans, Sixers, Flyers, Phils, like all of that. Um, but I relocated to uh, Southern California. And this is where I'll stay. I'll, I'll raise my family here. I, I love it out here. The weather here is way better. Yeah. Um, but uh, but my heart's still, uh, you know, in, in Allentown, Pennsylvania. I went to Emmaus High School. If that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I teach at Lehigh University. Um, I am one of the very few probably remote professors, right? But uh, the class that I teach, I was brought in to teach a, um, a, a capstone class, right? So it's a series of engineers, um, and it's their uh, typically a seat, their, their um, junior, spring, senior, fall. So a full calendar year, and they give, they're given projects and work from local business, other businesses that actually need to get Done. So it's their first opportunity to work together as a team. It's a first opportunity to work together with clients and customers. Um, and so I teach them how to project manage, how to work with themselves to figure out and divvy up work, how to estimate, how to communicate uh, with oh, clients cool. and get things done. And it's that been interesting. an absolute blast. And, and it's fun me coming outside of academia um, to, to see how academia actually works. And it's been, it's been a delight. I work with some great people and we do some really cool work. They, Did you go to Lehigh? Was there a, no, a time? I went to Penn. I went to Penn State actually. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Ryan went like, to uh, Temple. Okay, right on. Yeah, I could have went anywhere, time. Sean. I, I, I could have went anywhere. Yeah. I chose Temple. Yeah. There you go. 
They were really the only ones to accept my ass. Well, Don't worry about that. You <laughs> wanted to be an owl, and that's okay. I didn't that's even get okay. a scholarship. They didn't even give me a scholarship. Yeah, that's how you, bad I was. You were just grateful they took you. Yes, that's pretty I, much I, I was, was, yeah. He was walking I got grants. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Well, I, I, the thing is, I got accepted at Penn State only if I went in summer session. <laughs> so I had to go to summer ahead of time <laughs> to get in. And, and here is the, the dirty little secret. You ready? I never finished college. I have 18 credits. 18 total. Oh, my, right. my daughter is a junior in college right now. You have now. 18 I mean, left or you have 18 total. Total. total? So you did one year. Well, I was there for two and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> Judgment-free zone, you guys. No, <laughs> there's no got to be a fraternity <laughs> involved here. Yeah. There's, a, there's a fraternity involved, yes? We, we yeah. need to hear this story, I, Sean. <laughs> there's a real exciting story. Just dumb kid gets overcommitted to do lots of things and stop doing yeah. all of them except for his fraternity, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> stops going to my, class, stop work. I mean, the whole thing. So, <laughs> my oldest brother, John, yeah. he went to uh, Stephen F. Austin uh, yes. in East Texas. And... Uh, Went for an entire year and never went to class. Hmm. And he was oh, just nice. wrapped up. He was, a, he was a Theta Chi. He was wrapped up in fraternity business. Yeah. Like hey, planning. Good work to be done there. A lot of work. Lot planning of work the next done. party. A lot of planning the next party. Making sure that everything's set in place. That's Think right. about it. That's Logistics, right. project management, party You're Learning planning. a lot. Learning a lot. Preach. Preach. <clears throat> Customer Customer service to make sure that the, the, yeah. 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 Got to work with a sorority. Got to got to be able to interact with you know like what's yeah. going on there. Like, just just think of the character he built. <laughs> yes. <Exactly. laughs> oh jeez. This is mom. not the, this is not the story I was hoping to tell. No. But I, I <laughs> no, but went, it's it's good that we have all of these shared experiences. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. So good. Yeah. So so now I'm working with with Lehigh University. They're they're amazing. And um, one of the really cool assignments I get to do with them is I've been pulled into what's called the Global Social Impact Fellowship Program. And <laughs> what this is a genius program. Uh, a gentleman there uh, named Kanjan Mehta has set up where uh, he has set it up so that. Students here in the U.S. partner with students in a developing country. So we work with Sierra Leone, Kazakhstan, the Philippines, and and India as well. And they build a business. So it's like an entrepreneurial school. They partner with a university in another college, and they build a business. And it's a whole opportunity for students to work together to bring something to market. And so I'm working with three different countries right now. I just got back from Kazakhstan said almost no one ever, right? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, just, I just got back from Kazakhstan where we spent two weeks working with universities there. Um, and we were bringing a, a uh, Almaty Kazakhstan has, has one of uh, the, the worst kind of pollution problems there. So right. we're bringing a technology to bear where we allow and educate elementary school age children on um, sustainable uh, environmental habits, right? To get habits early on to help protect the environment. So the students built this technology, they built the curriculum, they went and we pitched it to universities and we pitched it to the UN. And I mean, everyone wants it and now we're going to deliver it and pilot it in the fall. So that's one of the things that I, I get to kind of work on in, that's awesome. in my, my free time. And uh, so, so those are the kinds of things that I'm working on right now and it, it, it's super fun. But the thing that, that I'm most passionate about and the thing that I spend you know most of my, my, my time on is um, this startup, right? So little, that's a little bit about who I am. Let me tell you a little bit about the startup. You guys, tell me what you think, right? So I've, I've hired hundreds and hundreds of people in my career. And, and I love that. I feel like I'm good at it. Um, but you, all you know, great hires, people, all great hires. Yep. Never Lie. had a bad hire in his life. Never missed. Lie. Let, let's, let's, well, let's start by, I'm going to ask you what William always asked me. Yeah, yeah. How do you yeah. like your feedback? You asked about it. We got it. Like, how do you like it? Uh, <laughs> someone say served cold later, but I'll take it. Uh, however you want to do it. I, 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 yeah. So, so you hired hundreds of people. Yeah, and and I look back and I'm like, I'm I probably wasn't as good as I thought I was, and you know maybe a sixty percent success rate. Where success means they've stuck around longer than six months. They were right. able to yeah. actually perform the job that they were hired to do. They weren't completely toxic and hurt the team. <laughs> and and so in hindsight, like it was, 
wasn't as successful as I as I like it to be. And it's Hall of Fame numbers. Hall of Fame no most people I talk to are like sixty <laughs> percent is pretty good. There's some people that are like sixty. I'm like ninety nine percent. I'm like, okay, good job. The yeah. Jordan, well Jordan that means forty percent shit to bed. Right, Jordan, exactly. Jordan That's hit exactly two oh two and double yeah. A ball. Yeah. Right? Yeah. These are these are Hall of Fame numbers, I think. <laughs> They've got to be better. And, and for me, introspective. Like, why is it that way? And here's a couple of realizations. You guys, tell me what you think about these, right? Number one, the entire hiring process is curated by the candidate, right? Think about that. The resume, the interview, their LinkedIn profile, their social profile, their references, all handpicked, packaged, sealed, delivered to you in this negotiation and sales process by the candidate. They built okay. the narrative. They built the narrative and good on them. That's what they should be doing. They're trying to sell and get into a job. Mm -hmm. Right. And and most people are very genuine and very honest in that in, in entire approach. And, that, and that, that's super most important. With an asterisk. Until they can get another bump in salary. Then it's <laughs> then it's time to, you know, add a little and tell bit story. to that resume. But there's some crazy data out there where like X percent, and I don't remember off the top of my head, so I don't want to quote it, but it's significantly more than you would think of people fudge their resume. Like they exaggerate right. everything from exaggeration to lie to leave out, right? <laughs> and again, it's part of the sales process. And no one's verifying this. Like it's very right. difficult to verify and validate this. And so so let's say challenge number one is that it's in, like the whole process is curated by the candidate to get real kind of other right. information about that candidate is incredibly difficult. Third party incredibly validation. Difficult. Yeah. Right. So that's challenge number one. Challenge number two, we just recently ran a poll on LinkedIn where it was, what is most important when hiring? Right. And let's break it down into the three things. Hard skills. We know what hard skills are. It's like, can they actually do the job? Right. Mm -hmm. Soft skills. Like, can they manage their own time? Are they good communicators? Right. Like soft skills. And then the third one was character. What, what do you guys think? Where, where do you think the, we had about 1500 responses on this poll. Where do you think? people landed on those characters things. characters number one soft skills number two hard skills number three and, and i would right. i would and i would hope it ended that way i'm not sure character hit number one though character hit 80 and then a uh, number one by like 80 some percent yeah wow to the point where it wasn't even close no that's not, okay? that's not so, even a fair fight right so point number two is that mm. character is super super important Right. And, 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 and it's not just me saying that. And I think you guys would probably nod your heads and say, yeah, yeah, you know, we when we hire, when we bring people in, their honesty, their integrity, their work ethic, their respect, their humility, yeah. like these are things that are actually way, way more important than we're probably even giving credit for. OK, so point number two, I think well, we because, can agree. That, because that's yeah, tethered yeah. to values and culture, retention right. and sales yeah. and caring and empathy and all these other things. That's hard to get to otherwise. Right. So, Sean, as we're talking, you, you, you'll probably have a thought on this. And this, I don't want to derail yeah, yeah. us, but keep it no, in the back of your mind. Hiring for a full-time employee, character number one. Does that change if you're hiring a gig worker or a freelancer? Are you just hiring them for the hard skill? Does that change oh. perception? So that's a super interesting question, right? Our audience is is like the, the the white collar, you know, two to three years into their job to you know director VP level, right? So Canny's audience is just that, and that's really where we've paid attention. But let me flip that question back to you. You tell me, you're hiring someone who you're like, hey, I just want them to edit my podcast for for every day. Mm -hmm. Tell me what's what's how important is work ethic, honesty, integrity in just a contractor who's doing some editing jobs for you. I think how it depends important. on how hard up I am. If I need ah. something delivered and I'm behind from a gig worker, freelancer perspective, here's what I have. Give it back to me. I don't That's know, it. Man. You can take the boy out of the Philly. You can't take the boy out of the Philly. Out of yeah. The yeah. 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 <laughs> I've, I've seen you on several projects. I've said you run yeah, several I, DIY I projects Yeah, no. and you brought in contractors and, and in, Almost every one of those cases, you've had some problem. Yeah, and that, it because they were assholes. <laughs> yeah, but it but it wasn't to do with <laughs> their job. It was yeah. something to do with right. them communicate their ethics, yes, etc. 
Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can't remember the tile thing or something like that. Yeah, so like, if I got smarter, I would hire for character all the time or a combination right. of. But right. I think it, it really depends on how – like, if we need something that was needed five days ago, if you can get it done and I can trust you're going to get it done, I'll probably trust. take – the work, take the risk and, the work. and, and do that. I would not do that long-term if I, and long-term I define that let's go short. I mean, long-term for me would be like maybe past a week or two. Yeah. Cause that would be so toxic. I have, for I me have a I theory handle. on this. I have a theory. Let me know what you think. Right. Mm. I think we have just been beaten into submission that it is acceptable to not ask or care about someone's character and just take what we can get. And the reason for that is because yeah. it's impossible to figure that out. Right. Cause it's, it's Cause, completely cause, subjective. Right. Ryan, you're going to interview, you're going to ask your contractor and say, Hey, are you honest? <laughs> right? I am uh, tip top honest. <laughs> I would, no, no. He's, 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 he's interviewing contractors to put up drywall and, yeah. and you ask the question, are you honest? I would trust the guy that says yeah, no. most, of the, most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Now, look, yeah, I've right. learned – I have learned long ago, though, bad example because drywall, you need to be drunk or high. Uh, and they do amazing. <laughs> they, they painters do and drywall people, they, they need to be banged up to do well. 100%. Okay. 100%. Yeah. Not all. Just the ones I deal with. But, Maybe but, the asking, good one. but asking the question and getting that question, yeah. getting that answer – and again, not being polarity, I'm yes yeah. or no, but someone right. saying, I, you know, I try to be, I try my yeah. best to be honest. Sometimes yeah. I'm pushed into situations and I answer too quickly or whatever. And, and, uh, I don't put my best foot forward, but I try. I would like, hire that person I, every day of the week because they're at least, at least they're telling the truth about their weaknesses right. and they're, yeah, they're aware, aware enough, aware enough. And that's, yeah. that's huge. Or so, are they scam arty enough <laughs> right. to know what's smart? Oh, no, no, smart I... enough to be like, yeah, I know what this guy wants to hear. So, yeah. Dude, I just watched this TikToker guy about a guy <laughs> crossing the border. We're not going to let yeah. him talk about this company. No, no, company this is no, no, no. <laughs> Guys Edit crossing out, the border. Ryan. And the guy, the police officer says, hey, can I, I need to ask you a question. He said, you know, the larger question is in the Bible. I, saw, I just saw that today. <laughs> And this guy takes him, right, on his, he takes him on this rabbit hole of like, listen, Jesus says this. Do you have a moment? Well, you know, Being I'll pull saved. over. Do you have a little bit? You have a, you have some time so we can talk a little bit about the guys like, no, you're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> you're a citizen. You're, you're good. And he's talking like about he being saved back, and all this stuff. And he looks yeah, back yeah. at the camera. I'm like, dude, that, he's got a trunk of Coke. Like, that is so awesome. He played the game. He's got, he's got 600 fucking kilos in his trunk. Oh, my God. And, and he played yeah. the game. Anyhow, that's yeah. all we're talking about. I, I, that, that's fantastic. However. Great. But you, you have a company right. that you run. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, about yes. that. Yes. Right? About that. Can't. Yeah, so so great great dialogue on, on when and why we think character is important in hiring. Right. And I think that that uh, the more we talk to people, everyone just kind of nods and accepts the fact that like, I, I sometimes just need to put butts in seats and I'll take the crap roll on character. And right. then right. you start looking at the data of how much that, 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 that wrong hire costs you, right? Huh. I've seen examples where wrong hires cost everywhere. I mean, there's a, a stat out there where it's like 30% of their salary could cost you. Mm. But I would argue in it's time more. lost, opportunity cost. Like there was, a, there was one example where this company, they brought in a, a, a VP of, of client services and assigned it to this account. And within three months, right, that client had been fired with one of their biggest clients. The client fired the agency because of this person, like three people quit because of this person. And then they had to pay this person to leave. So all in and then lost new business pitches because of it. So all in right. was a million oh, to two million dollar oh, loss because it was the wrong. Yeah. Person. Even it's not the, just that they the couldn't lifetime the value of that client that lost. Right, untold. we're just not looking at those numbers, and and so so anyway, the cost of the wrong employee, and and that has a varying scale itself, right? There's the just bringing in someone who doesn't get along with the team or can't do the job, all the way to you know fraud. There's a recent example or a recent study out from the National Association of Fraud Auditors where um, 
75% of the people that they found that committed fraud, fraud passed their pre-hire assessments. Yeah. These are not people yeah. that like they pass criminal background checks. They pass, mm-hmm. you know, employment background checks, pass references, right? Again, and they're, curating they're, that. Fraud. They're, they're curating that. They're, they're, they've con- uh, controlled the narrative. Exactly right. So, so anyway, the, I think I painted the picture that, that character is important. But the, the third point, like, is that character is impossible to get. Someone's true character information, like who they really are, is impossible to get. Going back to the, Ryan, if I'm interviewing you, Ryan, are you honest? Yeah. Sometimes. Okay, well, Most sometimes. of the time. Well, there you go. There you go. It, but if, you, if I said, let me ask your three references, these, these are your champions. The people oh, yeah. you give me. These are people that are just teed up to to hit it out the park for you. Make sure you get yeah, it. Yeah, I, I never thought that was a good idea. Never. Yeah, most most people we've talked to, and we've done hundreds and hundreds of market validation uh, research interviews, is that very few people use references. If they do, they just use it to check a box or to CYA. They're like, if that mm-hmm. person goes rogue, they're like, well, we check the references as if that okay. lets people off the hook. Yeah. Right. So we can establish that 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 process is in te- in ter- ter- terribly difficult to get. So, Canny, we have found a way to get candid but confidential peer reviews that protect the privacy and dignity of both parties, right, to help generate and bring forward someone's character based on insights and scores. I mean, that sounds like a mouthful, but let me, let me, let me make it super simple. There are people on this planet that are qualified to tell me about your character. Ryan, the people that I'm talking about are people that you've worked with in the past. All your the peers, swim team mm-hmm. peers. Yep. Yeah, right? <laughs> your peers and your colleagues in the yeah. past have the ability I'd to tell fail. me. This I'd is fail. why I am unhirable. See? Right. <laughs> I'd so fail. Yeah. Your any report will be just amazing. I can't wait to watch I'm it. I'm starting to sweat. Stop. <laughs> you, you Actually, I, you know, it's, it's interesting because I, I'm thinking – Every so often we have these conversations where I lose train of thought because I start thinking mm-hmm. about what the other person's saying. And I'm thinking about what was the other one? The guy was about it was about bad bosses or something. Sure. And he had asked a question about a, a time when you had a good boss, was it? What was yeah. it? Yeah. And you could not find one. Yeah. I think wow. he thought I was like <laughs> th- like listening and I was like No no. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I nice. really <laughs> yeah, drinking no. since Tuesday. <laughs> and I and it's just like one of those moments where I'm like you know, I I can pick a few out that I would think would say I suck as a person because we've had bad working experiences together. Right. Right. But I think when it came down to it, Probably post says, separation yeah. of working yeah. together, yeah. I would hope that they realize kind of like what my point of view was, what their point of view was, and there were some learning experience that they would talk about. But I'm not quite sure how that would pan out. I might be jobless. Well, And this what makes this conversation about character super important, but super uncomfortable for people. Right. People. Right. Everyone. They can't control it. We all all think we are just awesome across the board. Oh, yeah. No, I'm good. Right? We think that. And, and, And I'll tell you, too, the people that aren't awesome, the problem people... They don't know they're the problem people. Yeah, it's like stupid. Stupid right. people don't know they're yeah. stupid. <laughs> and, and so what happens is, what we've seen is realization happen when people start seeing their canny score and report. Right. Oh, my gosh. I didn't that's, think that. Yeah. They're, they're like, oh, my gosh, that's way better than I would have thought. I'm humbled, right? This is awesome, and I'm going to share it. Or That'd be me. I, I, I think it would be mostly report. depressing. Naturally. When we look at Ryan's, but but here's the thing. Here's, my my brother uh, used this parallel. So so we uh, he's a huge soccer or football fan football. for those of you guys out there. Football. Um, he's like every professional soccer player has this spider graph of these five skills. It's like passing, dribbling, game awareness, sure. whatever. Even if we look at the spider graph, right, which kind of shows the 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 yeah. area of where you're really good. And and if you're not good at something, it's like an indent. So you can look like Pac Man, or you can look like a Right. You know, an hourglass. He's like every single professional soccer player. No one has all five characteristics peaked out. The best ones have like three, and That's the right. other two are really low. And and if we can think about that and say, I want that information on me, yeah. right? I want to know if people think I'm toxic in the workplace. Like the top performers, mm-hmm. I think, want to know that information. 
and it and, and and it would be awesome for them to know it and then find a way to do something about it. Can you be right? a top performer and not want to know that information? I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. I don't yeah, think I don't think possible. you can. Yeah. I think I that's think part best. of what makes a top performer. I'm thinking of the sports because we all like sports. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking if you're, uh, you know, pick your favorite player because as I, I'm, I'm rewatching the Last Dance right now after the like third time, yeah. and it's like the players that the role players they wanted to be role better role players. They knew right. what they were supposed to be doing, but they still right. want to be better at it. That's right. So they're top performers. That's right. They're top. No matter performers. what your role is, yeah. Yeah, I think if you if you're a top performer, mm-hmm. you want to know, so that you can do something about it, or it validates what you already know. Like, okay, mm-hmm. I am pretty, I am mm-hmm. pretty, uh, pretty good at communications, or I am pretty, you know, supportive of other people. Whatever the things are that make up character. And by the way, while you brought up the the spider map, do you have a character spider map? Uh, for me personally, no, no, for, or just there, in general. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, no. These things are fascinating to and see. So, for example, I'll I'll I'll, I'll show you a couple examples. I'll, I'll walk you through a couple examples. One is I've got an engineer, right? Super high on work ethic, super high on honesty, right? Think about that for a second. Okay. Low like low on things. other things like humility, <laughs> right? Like uh, yeah. uh, and 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 that's okay, right? I was about to say. Imagine having that conversation with someone saying, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to interview Ryan. You're this engineer, right? And this is your spider graph. You're low on humility. You're, you're medium on respect, but you're high on work ethic and high on honesty. I know you're going to tell me the truth. Hired. 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 Right. And so that's the fascinating thing. Like, I think it's once we get all this data, because we're getting an amazing amount and, and, and great data that is you can't get anywhere else on the planet about the human workforce, right? And when it comes to, to character, like publish yeah. a series on look at the average spider graph from character by job role. I mean, think about what, right. what a business development person is. Maybe well, a little yeah. lower on work ethic, but really high on these other things that are important. So so we're getting this my, data. My cardiothoracic surgeon? Yes. I could care less if they have empathy. Yeah. Or, <laughs> right. Right? Yeah. Humility, don't care. Yeah. Don't care. don't care. Can you Work fix ethic. me? Don't care. Yeah. Work, Work ethic, ethic and honesty. honesty. Yeah. So do you see do you, do you see wow, a disparity cool. between what works and doesn't for organizations or it's what seems to be yeah. more successful? So we're still real early. We're in just so you know, we're in the beta for users. So yeah. right now we're looking for users to try this out and test out and get some results and, and, and beat up with us and make sure the tech's working right before we launch it. So um, I'm hoping that in the near future, as that data comes pouring in, we'll be able to go to an organization and say, hey, here are some things that we're noticing and some trends like that that might be super interesting to you. So, but think Where, how powerful that that information is in the in the interview process. As an interviewer, yeah. I get handed this this spider graph. Right, I know out the gate you are high on honesty and high on work ethic. I'm like, those are awesome. Let's talk about respect. Right? Why do you think people are are lowering you on this? Like, and I. I don't have time for idiots, <laughs> right? Okay, I get that. <laughs> now that I know that, like, let's be honest. Now that I know that, what we need you to do here is let's not treat them like idiots and to their face, but you can come talk to me anytime and I'll happily convince <laughs> me about that. Imagine the development that can happen when we know that character data. <laughs> I do like how you said, don't treat them like idiots to their face. <laughs> right, I mean... <laughs> We all manage people, right? We know that things that are going to work are not going to work. Yeah, well, yeah. We can all change behavior. Who knows? The, but the top performers will want to change that behavior. And, and down the road, yeah. Canny will be working to develop content to help you change that behavior. Um, a roadmap item is to have Canny certified coaches who can help you. You can register and, 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 and get coaching for a finite amount of time to help you um, be more aware and then research and get better at these things. So. So where do we go after? Where do we go after the pile, uh, say demo uh, beta? What's the yeah. next? What's the next thing? Good question. So, so first thing is let's just make sure that we can that uh, like the the unknowns, the hypotheses we're trying to figure out are number one: will people actually fill out these reviews without a ton of incentive? Right. Right. The research that we did was. Hey, absolutely. Eight, Eighty to ninety percent of the people will say, "I will absolutely take." less than two minutes to fill out a review on someone that I know. 
So the poll came back. It was 90% said they would do it. 82% right. said they would do it regardless of whether they liked them or not. Right? I, 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 you, you, you have both sides of the aisle there. I think it's right, right. there's just as much pull on yeah, either absolutely. side. Yeah. And that's a dangerous spot for us to play, right? We do not want to be a vitriol place, a place where someone right. goes to, right. to be right. angry right. and try to right. take right. down an employee. And we've put a ton of controls and checks and balances in place to make sure that one person can't tank you, right? So how um, do they get? How do you get their information? Uh, so here's how it works. There's some magic here that I'm not going to kind of go into. No, no. But, but, uh. but but here's a few things. People want to know, hey, how do you make sure that the people that 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 it's review not the same me, references yeah, yeah should be able to review me like they're qualified to do it well number one is everyone who logs into our platform has to log in using their linkedin credentials uh, we know who you are we know right. a lot about you based on your linkedin profile your work history like all kinds of things about the you. overlap so we can, yeah, yeah we can verify and validate that you are who you say you are which is super important right so for example if i have some guy that i don't i've never worked with but you know, I have a personal feud with for whatever reason and, you know, take a number on that, I guess. Right. Yeah, if you yeah. have <laughs> that person can't log in can't and review me and tank me. Right. Because right. he's in, in the way the canny wow. algorithm is built so that it just validates those things. Those working relationships are important. And whether you're a peer or a manager or a direct report, right. that Sword all impacts our very smart algorithm. So so no, one no. of the things that would be is it is it on the roadmap? That when we ask those people to review Bobby, to if you want if they want their candy score, yes, absolutely. So you know so once you're done reviewing the virality, the review it's a one click review. There's no obligation to become a, have an account, but at the end, once you're done with it, if you're like, hey, do you oh, like this? Do you want this? And so what happens is, like you said, the viral nature of this is built to start kind of taking off. So once we right. once we kind of like. Pull the you know pull out the the, the or, or or release the the engine. Then I think the viral nature of this is going to take off, specifically for people that are curious. And here's the other thing: like a credit score, because this is actually more like a credit score than it right. is like a reference right. checking tool. Because this is longitudinal. So, like your credit score, you can opt to lock it, right, and just say, "Hey, I don't want anyone to look at this," and that's fine. As an employer, it gives you the opportunity to ask the question, which is, why did you lock it? Let me see it. Yeah. And if they say no, right. well, let's talk about that. That's a signal. Let's have a conversation. That is right. super insightful right. information. So, but we give you complete control. This is, you have to opt in in order to show these things. Like it's all, it's all, you know, done on behalf of this person, not to this person. And are we focusing on small businesses, franchise, yeah. the enterprise? Like who, good, good question. who's our target? Let's, let's talk about the two sides of one is from a user standpoint, this is really, like I mentioned, this is a, a no cost service for anybody that's right. wanting to get a, a score or a report that's out right. looking for a job or looking for professional development. So anyone can go in and do this. And our target audience there are those that have a year or two of experience because we're looking at your LinkedIn experience and your other, you know, public, publicly available information to find your peers, right? All the way up right. to like VPs, right? We, we've met with a lot of executive recruiters and most of them have said, we don't really need this right now. We can do our <laughs> We do this our own way. We have our own back channel. Yeah, or not, of course. Not uh, I don't believe that. For, I don't believe that for a moment that they I, have a tool. Yeah, I just yeah. believe they don't want to know. They I, don't I want to know they, because they need to make the hire. That's yeah. right. <laughs> I think there's a huge value in this at the executive level, but that's not where we're 100%. targeting just yet. Right. right? There's no, no. and there's in the roadmap there are ad additional products for you know academia for um, executive for like blue collar. Like we can we can get there at some yeah. point. But right now, it's just yeah. really targeted to the to those that have LinkedIn profiles and use that to map their career. Right. And what if? And I understand where you are today. What if they don't have a LinkedIn profile? Because I've yeah. come across some that don't have. Not not our audience, right? And right. so that's a super edge case. We're just honestly, all we'll recommend is like if you're serious about a job hunt, yeah, you might want to use this thing. Might want to use go the use this thing. One. Yeah, tool yeah. that people use yeah. like I, I don't know anyone that would hire someone that doesn't have a link see that was an honest answer yeah. see it was yeah. an honest answer I like you get spider web <laughs> my chart is through the roof I just... <laughs> here's the funny thing is I don't think I can get my own chart I want one like and I don't know oh. that it'll be awesome because think about how many oh, people no. I've had to fire oh. and let oh. go in business building right I make tough decisions 
And I'm going to tell you right now, I've screwed up so much. And oh, yeah, I me too. hurt people mm-hmm. and I unintentionally, like, this is just the nature of being an executive and a leader. And it, and, it, and it hurts me to this day, right? That's just the way it is. So I am super interested in my spider graph. I just don't think anyone will fill it out because they won't <laughs> believe that I can't Oh, they'll fill it out. out. Right. No, you just don't want to yeah. see that data. No, no, you I'm good want... with it. I want to see it. I, I just... <laughs> So, so how do, okay. So how, how does this work? If I want, if I want my graph, yeah. Yep. what do I do? You go to uh, canny.com right now, K-A-N-N-Y.com. And there's a little bit of marketing information to tell you about what we're doing. You click on the button for, for users and there's mm-hmm. an opportunity right there to sign up for our beta. It's, it's open for anybody to try. I will tell you it's in beta and there's lots of things that we're figuring out and learning oh, yeah, and making yeah. better. Well, if you want to help us best and give feedback, please do so. Like we want as But then you just go out and find the do the, oh, you yeah. do the thing. It's yeah. all built. Now and you have the ability, so we we have three ways of getting reviews. One is through our what we call canny match system, which which right now is using all this technology to go and find people. We're actually training a model right now to be able to get that better and better. Our goal is to improve this this canny mm-hmm. match system. There's two other ways. You can invite people to review you. You can just go in and say, hey, here's the 10 people that I want to review me. Um, You can also go in and we give you a a custom URL that you can post on your LinkedIn profile and say, hey, I'm doing this thing, right? If you want to and you've worked with me in the past, click on this link. If the wrong people review you, that's okay. Our algorithm sorts it all out. You don't have to worry about that, but post it out there. Because one of our challenges right now is that people get the email from Canny and they're like, this looks like a phishing attempt, right? Right, right, and, right. And so right. we've added content, but now we're just really trying to get the word out there that this is, while a brand new concept, this is legitimate and we're using your data this way and not this way and it, and it is and it is there. Do so. people categorize you as screening or as assessment? Yeah. Like where do, where do people, question. where do people we, put you? We put ourselves in like the pre-hire assessment space, but with, right. They're very, I mean, no one focuses on two things. This, these are differentiators. Number one is character only, right? Um, people a lot of times confuse soft skills with character because soft skills are easy to figure out, but character right. is difficult. So, mm-hmm. but, you know, our key differentiator is character. Our second key differentiator is who gets asked to do the assessment. Right. Most assessments, it's the candidate, and that can be gamed. People know how yeah, to yeah. do this, and they actually hate doing them, right? And in theory, what we in our research, we found that people do those assessments to check a box and then they move on and they, they, they're very complex to read out. And there's a value to those. But ours is we actually have people that the candidate knows that we find fill out that assessment. How valuable is that? information? And over time, this 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 workflow gets pumped into the ATS. And that's exactly right. So right now we're building the system through our website just because we want to prove the model. Right. Um, but we have in our roadmap, the very next thing we do is our integration with ATSs. We think that at some point yep. our customers who are recruiters primarily and then internal talent acquisition teams, that they're going to access it through um, whatever through tools through one yeah, of their yeah, one of their ATSs. Right. And so, so how, do, how, how do I get to see the hiring manager that's interviewing me? Oh, you want to see their score? I yeah. want to see their score. Yeah, I Ooh. think that's genius, right? There's oh, no yeah. reason that that's Maybe not, not your market today, but right. how do I, in as the, a candidate, without just going to glass door or something of course, goofy? Right. There's always glass yeah. door. Still but, you, 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 yeah, but you can't get hiring manager data no. from glass door. There's, there's a, you know, right now our model is you can only see your score and report, right. and, but, but paying customers can see whoever they want to see. So right. there's a gap there that we're going to have to figure out, which is I think it is awesome that a candidate would want to see their hiring manager's um, information. Yeah. So there's a there's a model in there somewhere. We can sort it out and figure it out. Um, but that is for sure got to be on the roadmap. Yeah, is, I mean, I, 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 I could see I could see a corporation saying we want to be open, honest, ethical, the whole bit, right? I did. Our, if you're going to be here as a hiring manager, you're yeah. going to do this. Because we want candidates to come in and research as well. That's exactly yeah, we're not hiding right. anything. Yeah, right. and, and I mean, creating a product that allows a, a, a client or a, a, an enterprise customer to open up their hiring manager's port to someone that they're interviewing, that the, those features and functionalities, that they're easily built. They just need to be mapped yeah. out. So I, I love the idea of that, that level of transparency. And I think candidates would love that too. It's only yeah. fair. It's if only you, fair. Yeah, if you're asking me... Then, uh, then why can't I ask you? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't mind you asking me about my character. I love the mutual 
transparency, right? right? I think that's the only way it works. So how are you, uh, how are you thinking about doing integrations? Are you going to uh, do them natively? Or are you going to work through a system? Yeah, so we're, we're doing all the diligence on that right now. I think we are going to, uh, we have a, a, a set of advisors who really know the space inside and out that are going to weigh in. So once we kind of get through our beta efforts and we right. prove the model that it works and that people will buy it, by the way, fresh off the press, we got our first commitment to a paid customer for beta yesterday. What? Yep. Golf clap, golf yep. clap. Major East Coast <laughs> University. So this is a big, big I'm deal. kind of thinking I know who no, this is. Not the one you're no, thinking. Not the one you're no, thinking. Oh, oh, okay. yeah, no, I don't, I don't mix those right now. Uh, but one day. <laughs> um, but so, one day I will. Yeah. So the good news is that, you know, we're proving the model that people will pay for this. We're proving the model that people will do this. Um, and once we've gotten and you know, check some of those boxes, then we're going to go all in on integrations because we think that that's just the way yeah. that, that it has to be used. I, I think probatively when you're talking to a prospect – and they don't prioritize character in that in that scenario that you put forth yeah. uh, a, a while ago with the poll. Yeah, they're not a good prospect for you. I agree. Like it's yeah, like let's like, let's just stop talking right now. Let's but, just let's talk space in a couple of years. Yeah, maybe maybe you think about character differently. But most but most candidates don't think about that when they're answering questions like, what are your biggest strengths and weaknesses? Well, I'm going to tell you what I either learned on TikTok to say or <laughs> what my skills are. <laughs> but if someone if someone said to me, hey, I'm, what are your what are your strengths? <laughs> well, <look. laughs> sorry. Sorry, Ryan, uh, that uh, hit home a little much there. No, well, William just said uh, <laughs> he just referenced a TikTok. That's oh, all. OK. okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it like we're actually putting out content right now to train candidates to weave their character story into the standard common interview questions. Like, yeah. hey, what are your strengths? I am really honest and I am, you know, but at the same time, I have a very strong work ethic. And here are some examples of those things as opposed to saying, yeah. I'm really good at this technology and I worked on this project that did these things, right? And so if, if candidates are trained that... Actually, employers care about that information more than they think. Let's start having everyone make character mm -hmm. a focus of the hiring conversation, which is really what Canny is all about and, 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 and our push and our drive to do. Last yeah, question so, for me. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You ladies first. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> How about them Cowboys? Yeah. <laughs> it's two against one here, man. Right. We, we can both I, you. I know, I I know. Know. Ryan's going to ask well, me to co-host on the uh, podcast. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> we've we've been relevant in the last thirty years huh? in uh, uh, every other sport in Dallas. Mm, sport. So, in every uh, other sport. <laughs> so uh, you've dealt with a lot of recruiters through yeah. the years. Yeah. What do you just broad strokes? What do you think the character spider graph looks Ooh. like for recruiters? <laughs> Remember, they're going to be buying your product. Yeah, no, no, this is good. <laughs> I, I love I, that question. You know why I'm asking this, Ryan. I, you know why uh, I'm yeah, asking this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So here's what I'll say. I mean, just like with every other job, recruiters are scaled differently. I know some recruiters, right. like literally all they did was pass yeah. resumes back and forth. And they right. they, they maybe maybe didn't weren't trained well enough to know how to actually do the job and, and, and be helpful. Yeah. And then I've had recruiters that I'm like, they have sent me two candidates. Both of them were freaking awesome, and we crushed right. it on one, right? right. So, so just like with any other job, you're going to see a ranking. But, that, but it's so interesting to say that some of them are going to be super high on work ethic and super high on, let's say, um, uh, honesty. There are some that are going to be low on integrity because they're just trying to get the sale, right? Sure. And so and that'd be interesting. I'm, I think I'm going to go back and, and, and do a little noodle I, on what I think that spider graph actually looks like. I, I want an industry. I want an industry report yeah. on recruiters and character. Okay. Okay. Give me, give me one I think year. It would be, I'm going to have so yeah, much yeah. good data. Give me one year and I'll be able to. I think it'd just be fascinating data. to then report back to the recruiters, yeah. uh, all the recruiters and say those in staffing, those are, that are corporate and then be able to say, here's, here's what it should be. If you're not, if you're not in or working towards this, you know, again, you're a work in yeah. progress. Yeah. If you're not working towards this spider graph, then you're not going to be a great recruiter. There you mm -hmm. go. You might and be. They can go recruiter. across any Absolutely. industry, any position. 
Yeah, I'm yeah. just thinking about recruiters. We're going to be able yeah, to yeah. So, recruiters and give them something to attain and work towards. I think it's great. That's right. Yeah. That's well, right. when you release that that research, we'll send. Let us know. Yeah. We will send you a care package with a scrub brush, a lot of soap, <laughs> some bleach. Gone. You can just well, clean yourself. You know, maybe off. at that point, I know I'll never get another job in this city again. <laughs> uh, I think, honestly, I think we're not giving it enough credit. I, I think it's be better than we think it is. But at the same time, look, let's go see the data. Imagine we're going to yeah. character data. That well, I think there's. Terrible. I think the, I think the difference in what I think again, just forecasting, years of experience, yep. years of training, yep. corporate versus staffing. So third party yep. recruiting, mm-hmm. yep. completely different than corporate. Okay, so. Like, I think you're going to be able to then say to Robert Half or Manpower or somebody like that, say, okay, hey, listen, you got these folks that are one to three years of experience. This is what Spider Graph looks like. Yep. I love it. Okay. If you want that to be different, then these are the things that that impacts that. That's exactly right. <laughs> Ryan, I'm, I'm good, man. You got anything else? I'm, I'm good. Sean, this has been really probably one of the, the better conversations this week. And it's, yeah. we're halfway through. So that's, that's saying good. a lot. That's that good. saying a lot. So out of the two lot. that you yeah. had, I'm in the top. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't. This is our first one. Don't worry about uh, it. Right. Uh, Even no, I, I love it. I love coming out. With stuff. Thank you. Ryan, Ryan will put the Fly Eagles fly, the fly yeah, in the, into uh, the music. Yeah, the, the intro. We're going to swap the music. Boom, boom, like boom, it. boom. That's just going to happen. We hey, should just have 40 minutes of scrolling Eagles theme song, and that will get more views, I think. <laughs> That's exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> Brother, thank you so much for coming on. We thank appreciate you guys for having it. me. This has been awesome. All right. Take care of yourself.